Hey everybody, what's going on? Hellmite here, bringing you another video from Grab the Lantern today. It's Tuesday and the patch notes have been posted, which means it's time for the top 5 changes of patch 1115. As always, I'll be going through the most impactful changes in this week's patch, and letting you guys know what you've been looking forward to in the coming weeks. 1115 has a bunch of kind of small changes, but a lot of things that are actually really relevant to talk about here, and I'm already cheating a little bit by throwing in a sixth change that you guys can be looking forward to, so let's just go ahead and start off with that uh, aforementioned sixth change, which is a quick note on the Sentinels of Light event. Riot are adding in a daily quest that gives 600 Sentinel points for playing a game of League of Legends, TFT, Ultimate, Spellbook, all that kind of stuff. And this is because a lot of players were lagging behind and Riot wanted to allow everyone to experience the event, even if they play the game very casually. So that's sort of a sixth change here that I'm going to throw in real quick as a note to you guys that you will be able to start making a lot of story progress coming up soon if you do want to see the full story. So that's really nice that they added that in. Moving on to the patch proper now. The first thing to note is, of course, Akshan is going to be coming out with this patch. His slated release date is on July 22nd, which should be quite nice. I'm really excited for Akshan. I think there are a lot of things he can do quite well, but he will require a lot of micro skill and macro awareness to get maximum value out of him. I feel like he could potentially be frustrating, but also potentially do absolutely nothing. But I'm going to lean more towards the former than the latter on this guy. So definitely look forward to seeing him in your games as we move forward. Moving on to the number four change on this patch, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom here to Hullbreaker. That's right, this item is actually getting some buffs on this patch, as it actually wasn't performing that well. I know a lot of people were acting like Hullbreaker was going to be the end of the world, myself included, with how many stats it gave, but apparently it hasn't been enough for this item to make a huge splash, especially in casual play. So Riot are buffing up the bonus resistances that both the champion and the minions gain while they're alone, in order to really make this item sort of the split push 1v2 item for champions that are trying to exert pressure in a side lane. I'm quite a fan of Hullbreaker, actually. It does feel pretty nice when you're able to get a lead as a top lane champion and then buy this item and have the ability to make use of that lead rather than just kind of be at the mercy of the rest of your team. So I'm kind of interested to see where this goes for Hullbreaker. I think it's quite competitive now, so we'll see if it ends up being even stronger in the future. Moving on back towards the top of the patch here, we do have some Mordekaiser changes to talk about. Mordekaiser has been struggling a little bit for a while now. Some of this is because of his target access, which is an intended weakness, but the other issue is his durability, because Mordekaiser, I think, is on the squishier side for a lot of Juggernauts, and he really relies on his W, which the cooldown is so long that Mordekaiser really wants to get as many casts of it as possible, but unfortunately doesn't get the opportunity to do so. These changes are massive for Mord. This gives him the potential of popping his W twice in a team fight, which is absolutely a massive team fight swing for anyone who's actually been able to pull that off on Mordekaiser, I'm not going to lie. And the ability to charge it significantly faster means that Mord will get to the full shield value before he gets extremely low, which means that he then has more health to keep fighting with after the shield expires and then potentially survive long enough to get a second W. There are a lot of really good things that this change does for Mordekaiser, so definitely look forward to seeing more Mordekaiser in your games coming forward. Moving on to the number two change here, it's Gwen who's finally visiting the patch notes for some nerfs. That's right, Riot are finally nerfing her down. The eastern regions have finally looked at the western regions and said, huh, those guys are playing a lot of Gwen, I wonder why. And she's starting to crop up almost everywhere as a pick or ban at champion. So Riot are very conservative with the nerfs here, but I honestly like the direction they're taking with these changes by reducing the bonus attack speed she gets from her E. This means that not only, you can't really prevent her from getting that first big uh, Q onto you by dashing forward and then pressing Q immediately, but it means that trying to charge up to the second big Q is a lot, takes a lot longer for Gwen because she has less attack speed to work with. Because this isn't an ability that she maxes first, it means that by she really needs to hit level 13 before she's firing on all cylinders as far as her offense goes, so I kind of quite like this change. I do think it's a good nerf to Gwen. Is it enough to get her out of pro play? Maybe, maybe not, but I at least like the direction Riot are taking with the changes. Finally, scrolling on back down here for the number one change on this week's patch, it is Viego. That's right, the two champions that released this year so far, and we're seeing a lot of pro player both receiving nerfs, and the Viego changes, I think, are pretty big here. Essentially, this really, really nerfs down Viego's lane, as the sustain he gets off of auto-attacking marked minions is negligible at this point. 10% healing means that he will heal a little bit, so if he is able to do the thing where he queues the whole wave and auto-attacks every single minion once to proc his passive... He's not going to even heal that much off of it because it's only 10% of the base heal overall. And the Q took a small amount of damage here as well, meaning that Viego's ability to constantly trade with champions, right? This is his PvP power here, is really kind of reduced. Because Riot added back 20 bonus damage against monsters on his Q, the Q is doing the same amount of damage he did before against monsters as it is currently on live. So... 
that isn't changing so jungle viegos will really not feel this change very much and that's where i expect him to still be played in pro play especially if he does see play will be in the jungle exclusively because his laning phase is just going to be really really weak his ability to trade is down his sustain is down just a lot of weaknesses now are present in laning viego so i love these changes and i'm expecting them to actually make a an impact on viego's presence in pro play or at least maybe get him into the jungle where he has i think a lot more trade-offs than he did previously and that's going to be it for the top five changes of patch 1115. Technically top six if we count the Sentinel of Light event changes. So anyways, let me know what you're most excited for down in the comment section below. I know I'm a big fan of that sixth change. That's why I threw it in there. But the nerfs to top tier champions are always super exciting for me. So glad to see those are up. But let me know what you guys are most excited for down in the comments. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. If you enjoyed the video today, go ahead and leave it a like. And if you really enjoyed the video, consider subscribing. I upload a video every Monday, Friday, and on patch days like today as well. Once again, thank you guys so very much for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll talk to you all later.